Pain is an inevitable place that we all must face and should learn to embrace. Let's talk about it on A Word with Anthony Walker. Today's word is pain. Pain, noun, physical suffering or discomfort caused by illness or injury. I could tell you right off the bat, this episode is going to be painful. We will have to revisit some pain, grapple with it in order to deal with it. While preparing for this episode, I tried to think, when was the first time I had experienced pain? And to my memory, the earliest pain I could remember, I was about two years old and it was a kerosene heater. I was sitting in someone's lap as we were gathered around the the heater and everyone had their hands you know, had their hands hovering over the heater. And I put my hand on the heater. Now, my earliest deep painful memory was the pain of grief. It was the pain of realizing that my father was dead. I was about six years old and I was playing outside. I had memories of when my father had a heart attack. But at the time, those memories seemed like a dream to me. For some reason on this particular day, while rummaging through my thoughts and memories, that it hit me. My father is dead. Oh, it was a sinking feeling deep within me. It was so painful. These were my earliest memories of physical and emotional pain. I wish that I could say that this was the only pain that I had experienced, but life as you know it is full of pain. In the Bible, one of the oldest books we have is the narrative of the life of Job. Job was a great man. In fact, one of the greatest men to have ever lived, a man who would eventually say, I wish I was never born. Man is but a few days and full of trouble. Oh, that my grief were fully weighed and my calamity laid with it on the scales. For then it would be heavier than the sand of the sea. Now, why would a great man, one of the greatest men, say things like this? Well, pain. Let's go back. Now, Job was a great man. I know I've said this a lot, but it's not that he was great because a lot of people liked him or that he was just a really, really good guy. He was great because God recognized him as a great man. And if God calls you great, you're great. Now, Job was a very good person. He was a devout man in his faith. He feared God. He turned away from evil. He raised his family right. He even prayed for his children daily, even when they were grown and out of the house. Again, he was a really, really good guy. And as it goes, good things tend to happen to good people and bad things tend to happen to bad people. It's called retributive justice. But here's the wrinkle in the story. Satan, for some odd reason, was bored. He comes before God complaining of nothing to do. I guess the world was in such a good state that it rendered Satan jobless. Wouldn't that be a great situation today that Christians are so faithful and obedient and adherent to God's word that Satan runs out of stuff to do? I digress. Anyway, God asked him, have you considered my servant Job? 
I bet he was saying this with a sarcastic drip on it. Satan says, I have, but you're protecting him. Satan tells God, I bet if you stop protecting Job, he will curse you. Now, God removes the protection with a limit. Don't lay a hand on Job. Satan then attacks Job by destroying his wealth, taking all of his livestock, then by killing all of his children all on the same day. By just a thread of hope, Job held on and worshiped God. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Satan then ramps up the heat. Skin for skin. In other words, he's suggesting that Job could cope with what happened because it hadn't hit his physical pain receptors. Satan said, if you touch his flesh and his bones, he will curse you to your face. Get this. Satan was confident that if he could inflict pain in his flesh, it would invoke a negative response. Let's put a pin in that. He strikes Job physically with painful boils from head to toe. Job was in such misery that even his wife pleaded with him, why are you holding on to your integrity? Just curse God and die. His three friends came and just sat with him, speechless at his appearance. It was at this point that we see the first hairline cracks in the positive expressions from Job. May the day persist on which I was born. In other words, I wished I was never born. The day I feared the most has happened to me. Just think, a man that God has hailed as great, a truly great man, a faithful man, had a small, tiny iota of uncertainty in his heart. A man who was bold and courageous, deep down feared that one day somehow all of his world would come crashing down. It was pain that pushed that button. Not because Job had done anything wrong, but rather because Job had done right. Not because he was doubtful, but because he was faithful. What does that mean? That means that you can be faithful and be right and still experience tremendous and terrible pain. Here on earth, escaping pain or getting rid of pain is an impossibility because pain is inevitable. It is inevitable. Since pain is all around in some form or another, we have the tendency to try to numb it, escape it, or we chase pleasure. These are natural responses to try to remove the pain in our life. In our attempts to numb the pain, we try to drink it away or sleep it away or smoke it or dope it away. What happens when we try to numb the pain is often we numb ourselves to all feeling. We don't want to numb ourselves to feeling because feeling is what helps us notice we have pain in the first place. So we need to, at times, feel pain. Let's put a pin in that. And in our efforts to numb it away, once we return to our senses, the issue is still there. Sometimes we just want to escape the pain, another natural tendency. There are times we need to remove ourselves from unsafe situations. We need to remove ourselves from situations of abuse and the abuser. There are instances of pain that we cannot escape, but rather we need to address. And in the pursuit to try to escape pain, sometimes the tendency is to chase pleasure. 
We live in a society now that is growing more and more addicted to happiness or that state of mind that kicks in when the endorphins are natural pain relievers and dopamine, the reward center in our brain, are in sync. This is the state that video games tap into. Yes, we have the right to be happy, and we live in a nation that declares that every citizen has a right to the pursuit of happiness. But with as much pain as we will experience in life, we would constantly pursue happiness and pleasure. The opposite of pain isn't pleasure. The opposite of pain is strength. We will put a pin in that as well. You've heard the adage, whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. There's a lot in this life that will attack you. And if you're not fortified and strengthened from within, you will be crushed under the pressure of life. And life is full of pressure. Pressure, by the way, is the code word that doctors use to describe pain. No, I'm not about to poke you in the arm with a needle. No, it's you're about to feel some pressure. In all seriousness, if you desire to lead in any capacity, you've got to change your perspective on pain. Let's pull those pins from earlier. Satan was confident that if he could inflict pain in his flesh, it would invoke a negative response. Satan knows that he can invoke doubt, disbelief, and sometimes disobedience just by applying some pain in our lives. Sometimes pain is just to cause us to doubt our purpose and doubt God's plan. Sometimes pain is there to cause us to question our long-held beliefs in that which is true. And if our pain becomes too intense, we may just rebel. Our perspective on life often changes relative to our perspective on our pain. We must resolve in our minds that the outlook is still positive, regardless our pain, because pains of life will occur. And this one. So we need to, at times, feel pain. Yes, at times we need to feel pain. A book that I recommend to everyone, but especially leaders, is the book entitled Leadership Pain by Sam Chand. This book forces you to look at pain in a different way from the jump. Early in the book, Chan reveals a story of a doctor that worked with leprosy patients. Leprosy is a type of infection that primarily affects the nerves, but also skin and other parts of the body. Sometimes you'll read in the Bible of people who had leprosy that had body parts to just fall off. Well, one of the causes of this is that the fact that the nerves to the body part no longer work. So not feeling that part can cause injuries to happen unawares, and that affects the body. So this doctor that treated leprosy patients began to feel numbness in their foot, a symptom that could be leprosy. Could you imagine the panic and anxiety with feeling nothing? Long story short, one day the doctor stuck a pin in his foot and man, was it painful. He was relieved that he felt pain. Let's get that last pin. The opposite of pain isn't pleasure. The opposite of pain 
is strength. A good friend of mine shared with me a lesson that he learned about feeling pain. We are naturally accustomed to avoiding pain, but we cannot escape all pain. At some point, we must face it. So he advises that if we subject ourselves to some pain, yes, I know this is against our natural grain, we begin to get stronger and we can handle situations better. It doesn't mean that it won't hurt, but it means that it will hurt less. One thing he does is he regularly sits in a sauna. I mean, he gets it cooking nearly 200 degrees. I joke with him and I tell him that that's close to the temperature I smoke my brisket. But he does this for a myriad of health benefits. But the physiological benefit is that hot days of like 95 degrees don't distract him like they used to. He's strengthening his mind and body. The pain may not change, but his inner strength can. Sometimes pain is a teacher. It teaches us to avoid a hot stove or a sharp knife. Sometimes pain is a test, an obstacle that one must grow to overcome. Sometimes pain itself is a testimony. Feeling pain shows that your feelings, your sympathy, and your empathy still work. There are some pains that we cannot escape. The pain of action and the pain of inaction. The pain of proactivity and the pain of procrastination. The pain of failure or the pain of regret. The pain of decision-making. Sometimes either decision you make will have some degree of pain to it. I'll leave you with these powerful words from Leadership Pain. There is no growth without change, no change without loss, and no loss without pain. There is no growth without pain. Thank you for sharing a word with Anthony Walker.